We are now joined by Congressman Jordan. The first time dealing with all of this in detail. Good evening, Congressman. Good evening. You heard that report. Yeah. You've seen the reports in recent days. Your reaction first to all of this? It's false. I mean, I never saw, never heard of, never was told about any type of abuse. If I had been, I would have dealt with it. Our coaching staff, um, we would have dealt with it. These were our student athletes. A good coach puts the, puts the interests of his student athletes first. We would have dealt with it if we'd have known about anything that happened. Um, if, in fact, there are victims, they deserve justice. There's an investigation going on. We're going to, I think, meet with them next week. We want the investigation to, to get to the truth. That's what we need here is the truth. All right. Take a listen to uh, DeSabato from one of the statements he made earlier this week. I know Jim knew about uh, the what I call the deviant sexual uh, atmosphere that we were How exposed do you know? to. How do you know? Well, I, we all had conversations. Uh, Jim was more like a big brother than a coach. It was something that we would discuss on a regular basis, mainly with nervous banter, locker room banter. Now there are five, at least five. One Politico was saying there's six. Where are these guys coming from? Conversations in a locker room are a lot different than um, allegations of abuse or, or reported abuse to us. I mean, I've been, been on the sport of wrestling my entire life. Uh, kids wrestling, junior high wrestling, high school wrestling, University of Wisconsin, coached at Ohio State. I got two boys who wrestled for the Badgers. I got, I got four nephews who wrestled at Ohio State, another nephew who wrestles for Iowa. Uh, conversations in a locker room are a lot different than people coming up and talking about abuse. No one ever reported any abuse to me. If they had, I would have dealt with it. And what bothers me the most is the guys that are saying this thing, I know they know the truth. I know they do. Dunyashi yet. He wrestled for, I, I, we, we trained with these guys every day, sometimes twice a day. And, and for, for, I know what they're saying, I know they know what they're saying is not accurate. So what do you think the motivation is then? You'd have to ask them, but I will tell you with Mike DeSabato, Mike DeSabato has a vendetta against Ohio State. He lost a licensing agreement with Ohio State. He is, he is out to get Ohio State. He's, he has a vendetta against our family. He was arrested just five months ago, threatening Chris Spielman's lawyer. Um, and Chris Spielman, he, he, he's got all kinds of lawsuits against him. And what bothers me more than that is the fact that CNN puts him on TV three times in one day. With, with I, I mean, if... If they would have done their done their homework instead of rushing to rushing to put someone on TV who's who's had a criminal record, all kinds of all kinds of uh, lawsuits against against him, saying these kind of false things, um, but it, it, and waited for like to, to get the real facts about this guy's background. Okay, but oh, you know goodness. there are others. You know it's not just him. Now there are five. Uh, the Wall Street Journal talked to the former UFC world champion Mark Coleman who says he has an affinity for you, likes you a lot. Uh, but he says, quote, there's no way, unless he's got dementia or something, that he's got no recollection of what was going on at Ohio State. I have nothing but respect for this man. I love this man. But he knew as far as I'm concerned. I feel sorry for Mark Coleman. Mark Coleman was, um, Mark Coleman wrestled for us, uh, was a national champ, and then was one of our coaches for several years. Um, that it's, it's just not accurate. There is, um, th there never was abuse reported to me, and if there was, we would have dealt with it. Um, Sean Daly, former Ohio State wrestler, I participated with Jimmy and other wrestlers in the locker room talk about Strauss. We all did. It was very common knowledge in the locker room that if you went to Dr. Strauss for anything, you would have to pull down your pants. Uh, it goes on to say that you had said something, like if they tried to do that for a thumb injury, I would kill him. Not true. Did not say it. All right, but let me ask you, Congressman, you've got these guys that are now on the record. Somebody reading this from outside, what do you say to them? What is driving these guys to say this now? Yeah, you'd have to ask them. I think uh, the timing is, is, uh, is suspect from when you, when you think about how this whole story came together after uh, the Rosenstein interview uh, or, or, or hearing um, with, this, with this whole talk about the, the speaker's race. But it is just not accurate. And as I said before, there's conversations in the locker room are a lot different than someone coming up to you and saying there was some kind of abuse. If there had been that, we would have dealt with it. Coach Hellickson would have dealt with it. Our entire coaching staff, we had five coaches. We'd have, we'd have dealt with it. These student athletes. So it, did you hear it in the locker room? No. No, no, no type of abuse. We, we did not hear that because well, if we had, we would have dealt with Something short it. of abuse that 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 may be considered abuse now in this current time. Did not. Did not. Um, 
and and again, the, the, that's the part that bugs me the most is these guys. You, you invest so much time with them. I remember Dunyasha Yetz competing, um, and and just I, I remember in the Big Ten semifinals, this this guy in a match where he was he was in a situation where he was getting hurt and uh, going out on the mat and helping this guy when when it happened. It's just it is just. It's so frustrating. I will say you have a number of people coming out in your who support you, yeah. who say they believe you. Uh, people who worked there, oh, that's people, a, uh, a widow of a, uh, a fallen marine who had bad experience. Ray Mendoza, with Ray Mendoza wrestled for us. Um, Mike DeSabato set up, helped set up, establish this fund, uh, a memorial fund for Ray, who gave his life for our country as a Marine in Iraq. I was at the first event, spoke at that event with Coach Hellickson and Coach Trussell. Um, and Karen Mendoza, Ray's widow, had to shut that event down, had to shut that, that fund down because of uh, Mike couldn't account where, for, uh, where the money was going. Had to go to the Attorney General to shut that down. Uh, to use a, a veteran, who, a, a, a Marine who gave his life for our country, to use that as a way for personal gain is as is, 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 is wrong as it gets. And this is the guy that the media puts on TV uh, three times in one day to make all these false statements without going back and checking his, it, the, the fact that he's in financial distress and has a criminal record. It is just well, We're going to try to follow up and have tried to reach out to him as well. Um, I heard you yesterday, I think, talk about the law firm that's involved in this investigation. It is the same law firm you mentioned that dealt with the dossier yes. that yeah. you are obviously dealing with. Yes. And y are you suggesting that this is some sort of conspiracy? No. I'm not saying that at all. All I'm saying is they said they reached out to us. They sent it to a non-existent email address. So think about this. Is th Perkins and Coy P Perkins Cooey, the Hillary Clinton's law firm. So the same law firm that can that can uh, find an ex-British spy to put together a dossier to go after President Trump can't find a congressman's email address, can't get a hold of me, and then they tell the press, we reached out to him, he didn't respond. That is just complete bogus. And, and I mean, Brett, when, I go, when I, we have one of these hearings in Congress, I tell you one thing, every liberal in the country seems to be able to find our phone number and find our address and call us up. But this law firm who's supposedly doing this investigation couldn't, couldn't find that. You didn't receive an email from them? We did not. You didn't we receive did not. any contact from them? They have not contacted. Now, they've been in contact, in contact with us since that. Uh, since, that, since that they said that, and we're, we're going to sit down with them. We want, we want to get to the truth. If there were people who were abused, they deserve justice. But what has been said about me is, is completely false. And it's been said by one individual who spent 18 months in prison for fraud, another individual who has this vendetta against Ohio State, who was bilking a fallen Marines fund, who, who has numerous lawsuits and, and was arrested. But That's you, the kind of guy that press puts on Just to on be TV. clear, you, for the guys who have also come out, Mark Coleman, Sean Daly, who said he was groped a half dozen times by Dr. Richard Strauss, you don't know their motivation. I, I, I don't. I don't. But what I'm telling you is it's not true. What well, they said about and me. And as you know in these stories, what happens is a lot of things start coming out. Politico has just moved a story saying that uh, there were voyeurs, voyeurs in uh, a hall, a building that housed the athletic teams, and that uh, the head coach, Russ Hellickson, would at times have to physically draw, drag these gawkers out because they were looking at uh, your wrestlers showering and, and doing various things. And that you, as the number two, uh, would, would do that as well. I never, I never drug anyone out. I will tell you, though, the, our uh, Larkins Hall was one of the largest intramural facilities in the country, on one of the largest campuses in the country. Our wrestling locker room was separate, but the, but the shower facility was part of the, the general population for the students, the faculty, uh, professors, and staff, and everyone could, could shower there. So, uh, but again, never saw any type of abuse there and never drug anyone out. Um, but it was in a large uh, intramural type facility. A lot of people will say, why did you spend so much time on this in this show? And we wanted you to address these allegations head on. Um, you are going to continue to address them. But what do you think the next step is here? We're going to get the truth out. The, the, the thing that I've been most encouraged by is the number of wrestlers and coaches who have contacted us and said, Jim, this is bogus. We got a whole list of folks who sent in statements saying this is ridiculous. We were there. We know you. Um, that's been encouraging. And the thing that's been most disappointing is I, these athletes who you spent most so much time with, working out with and training with, um, 
saying things that just just are not true. Because you're the most high profile currently? Mike DeSabato, his whole pattern is to latch on to high profile people for personal gain. Chris Spielman, and then he has, he gets, uh, harasses Spielman's uh, lawyer and is, is uh, arrested for it. Karen Mendoza, who sets up a fund for Ray Mendoza, who was a Big Ten runner up for us, was a great kid. I recruited that kid for, out of New Jersey. Gave, gave everything he had for us and then gave everything he had for our country and and he's taken money from that fund and and CNN puts him on three times to say things that are not true that that's a part and I worked with Mike I worked with Dunyasha when Dunyasha Yetz was wrestling in the in the Big Ten semifinals in a in a huge match He's in this scramble position, and, and he gets choked out, and I see it coming. I see what's getting ready to happen, and Coach Helix and I are starting to run on the mat because the ref doesn't see it. Passes out. We're there. I mean, th that's what coaches do. They, they look out for their kids. They look out for their student athletes. I had a great coach in high school, Coach McCunn, was the, the best teacher in our school, the toughest teacher in our school, and the, and the best – best wrestling coach in the state. He talked about this. Coach Hellickson did so much for me when he was my coach. And for guys that, that I know they know, I know they know what they're saying is not true. I know they know that. And they're, and they're saying it anyway. And, and what they did to, to Ray Mendoza's fund is... is I, I, Congressman, I, you've been in politics a long time. Last thing. Is this the toughest thing you've had to deal with? It's been the toughest week. I mean, it's just been tough for our fans. It's been... The, I mean, I, I, look, I don't want to, it's just been, but, but there's lots of things that people t have to go through tough things, but it's just been an emotional week, I should say, because our son got married last Saturday. This all happened. Last night, we, we, lost, we lost a nephew. Um, he was killed. In a, he wrestles for the University of Wisconsin. He's a junior, national qualifier, wonderful kid, and was, was killed in a, in, a, in a car wreck last night, traveling out to Iowa to see his sister, who's the statistician for the Iowa wrestling team. And... But I, look, I mean, all kinds of Americans have to deal with tough things, but, but this is wrong. I, I, it's just wrong. Congressman, sorry for your loss, your family's loss. We appreciate you dealing with these allegations on the show, and um, we'll continue to follow it. Thanks, Brad.